our look at the letter of St. James. The lectionary on these uh, Sundays in September has us hitting the highlights of this letter, and so we decided to spend this time talking about uh, what many have called one of the Bible's most practical books. The James in the letter of St. James, he's closely related to our Lord. Sometimes he's referred to as our Lord's brother, or sometimes his cousin. Those two words in Aramaic are the same, and so it's kind of hard to figure out exactly how closely related he is to Jesus. But uh, in either way, he's, he's close with our Lord. He's the first bishop in Jerusalem, in the city of Jerusalem. We read about him in the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 15, there's the first ever church council. The apostles gather together. They're trying to figure out what the place of the Gentiles will be in the new covenant. And Acts 15 tells us that James presides over that first council. So he's, he's a prominent early leader in the church. Last week we talked about James' admonition, be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. Put the faith into motion. Talked about letting God's word fill our hearts and our minds. The gospel going all the way deep into our soul and then going out of us into the world in love and service for the Lord and for others. Today we turn our attention to chapter 2. In these verses that we just read together, James draws out two sets of, of false distinctions for us. So sometimes in life we are led to believe that things are opposite of each other when they're just simply different uh, from each other. They're not really opposites at all. And, and that's what's going on here in chapter 2 of the letter of St. James. Uh, we all love labeling things and putting things in, in different buckets. And sometimes that's helpful, and other times it's maybe not so helpful. Sometimes uh, we put things in separate buckets that don't really belong in separate buckets. So, an example of a helpful putting things in separate buckets. Uh, well, we put into uh, one bucket good, and we put into another bucket evil. That is a good distinction. It's helpful for us as we're trying to navigate life, understand how to behave. It's helpful to know that there are things that are uh, right and there are things that are wrong. So lying, for instance, always wrong. Right? <laughs> you may have a really great reason to tell a lie. We might even think it's the right thing to do, but it's still the wrong thing to do. It's always wrong to lie because we are people of the truth. We belong to the one who said, I am the truth. So right and wrong, that's a helpful distinction. But there are other times when we want to make a distinction and uh, we do that unnecessarily. We differentiate unnecessarily and that's the kind of thing that James is drawing out for us in chapter 2 of his letter. He highlights two sets of false distinctions that trip people up, and he wants us to drill down on that. So he asks, is it faith or is it works? Do those two things belong in separate buckets? And then he asks, uh, should we love the rich or should we love the poor? And do those two categories belong in separate buckets? And of course we know the answers uh, to this uh, even before we begin looking at this because of course the answer is uh, love people whether they're rich or they're poor. Whether they're somebody you like or somebody you don't like. Love them because God loves them. Love them because they were created with great dignity. James is here in chapter 2 saying that if we spend our time pandering to the rich while ignoring the poor, well then we've neglected our duties as Christian people. James calls us to serve and love all people. <clears throat> it was down at the Union Gospel Mission uh, just a, a little while back Many of you have 
been down there. They serve thousands of homeless and vulnerable people every week. It's, it's such an incredible ministry they have there because the thing is, everybody who walks through the door gets the exact same thing. They all get fed twice. First with the Word of God, and then second with a hot meal. Everybody is treated the same. Everybody is lifted up. Everyone is given the respect and dignity they deserve. And when I reread St. James's words to us this morning, I thought about the Union Gospel Mission. I thought about uh, the ministry they have there. Because St. James writes this. If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So loving and serving all. Meeting the needs of others. That's what St. James is calling us towards this morning. That's the first set of false distinctions. He's saying... The rich and the poor don't belong in two separate buckets. They're of the same kind, even if we get confused about this. Who's worthy of our love and service? Everyone, every human being. James is saying, don't make this type of distinction. It's not helpful. Love all, serve all. And then he goes into a second set of distinctions. And he tackles a, a major problem for many, many theologians since the Protestant Reformation here. He asks, is it faith or is it works? Is it faith that matters in the Christian life or, or is it doing good works that really matters in the Christian life? Now this is a 500 year old debate. And many people are still fighting this one out in many Christian circles. And I have to tell you, just from where I sit, it's a debate about nothing. A debate about nothing. Because many Christian people have been uh, led to believe that faith and works are two completely different things, and they belong in two completely different buckets, when that is just not the case at all. And St. James couldn't make this more clear than he does this morning. What we know is that when it comes to what's important in the Christian life, it's a relationship. A relationship with the living God. And a relationship necessarily involves both faith and works. That's what St. James is telling us this morning. And the reason for that is simple is any relationship of any kind that we have, it involves thoughts and emotions and it involves actions. So if I say I love my kids, but I never spend any time with them, never there for them, then I think people could rightly conclude that I was mainly paying lip service to the fact that I love my kids. And it's the same way with the relationship with the living God. When we talk about God, we talk about a relationship that involves thoughts and emotions, and that's usually described as faith. And we talk about a relationship that involves action. And that is where we talk about good works. So here's the thing. If you don't ever find yourself thinking about God, if you don't ever find yourself uh, emotional when it comes to your belief in God, well then I'd invite you to go further in faith. That's what the life of faith is. It's putting on the mind of Christ, beginning to see the world from a godly perspective. Uh, it's continual inner conversion, day by day giving ourselves over more to Jesus Christ. And if you don't find yourself every day doing things specifically because you are a person of faith, well, then I invite you also to go deeper. Because our faith ought to motivate our actions every single day. 
And this is the central theme of the letter of St. James. So if you've checked out and you've heard nothing else, hear this. The central theme of the epistle is integrity. Integrity. Integrity when it comes to the life of faith in Jesus Christ. And what St. James is telling us is that there is no integrity in a faith that, that cozies up to wealth and privilege and ignores those in need. And there is no integrity, says St. James, in a faith that is just spoken about and that rarely gets acted upon. James is after integrity. He's after faith that is joined up with consistent action. And he says if it's not joined up with consistent action, it's really no faith at all. So, faith and works, they don't belong in separate buckets. They are intertwined. They're the same thing. Two sides of the same coin. God himself is dwelling within us. And that makes a difference for us every day. A difference that can be seen in the way that we're living our lives. Conversion of our hearts leads to the conversion of our speech and the conversion of our actions. So St. James tells us, be doers of the word, put the faith into motion. It's faith and it's works. It's serving the rich and it's serving the poor and it's serving everyone in between. He reminds us that Christ dwells within us. And the call that we have is not to let him stay within us, but to channel his love and his energy that we might love and serve the world that he died for. Is it faith or is it works? It's both. Is it the rich or is it the poor? It's both. 